Welcome to Mershman Seed's Cup of Joe. On this episode, Ben talks about proper planting depth and population when planting in dry conditions. Don't forget about scouting wheat, and we discuss if a fungicide application on wheat is necessary. Learn about the proper plant back time when spraying 2,4-D on your Enlist E3 soybeans. Hi, this is Joe Mershman, and welcome to Mershman Seed's Cup of Joe. Episode number 39, season 3. Today we have our regulars back, Ben and Tommy and Turk, and we're going to start with Ben again. I would like to start this week's Cup of Joe by talking about um, soybean seedling depth. Um, we do have some areas in our sales region that are experiencing rather dry conditions. Um, this is probably a little bit late. We probably should have been talking about this, I guess, last week. Um, but because a lot of those areas are getting closer to wrapping up. But um, basically, for the state of Iowa, state of Illinois, all the I states, an inch to an inch and a half is is typically where you're going to find the adequate seedling depth for planting soybeans. I tend to push a little bit deeper than that. I like the inch and a half to two inch range when we're planting soybeans just to make sure that we are in um, – moisture when it comes to variable soil types when we're switching things up. But this article here from Iowa State that we'll post talks about what happens when we get too dry and how far can we push the, the planting depth. And any time we go deeper than two and a half inches, we increase risk because that soybean plant is burning up a lot of energy out of the cotyledons to try and get itself pushed through that that, that layer to, to get to sunlight. So. Um, one of the things that they are talking about is, yeah, you can push two and a half, three inches, but you may want to consider um, upping your population a little bit because uh, UNL, University of Nebraska-Lincoln, has done research where if you're higher than 140,000 population, you're better off. There's no yield loss associated with planting two and a half to three inches deep. If you're at 100,000 and you do that, the the the, the, the bean plants don't help each other push out of the ground. So if you are planting into drier conditions, if you're trying to chase the moisture and you got to be down at three inches or three and a quarter or whatever that number looks like, 140, 150, 160,000 is probably the right recommendation to make sure that those beans are helping each other push out of the ground in those dry, dry conditions. Key to get, get it to moisture, but uh, be careful when you go too deep. Uh, I think that's the takeaway message. Because right? if you don't, if I, I, I know in the past we've seen farmers when it's bone dry, uh, go ahead and plant literally in, in dust, and that is usually a disaster, wouldn't you say, Turk? Depending on how, when, how soon it rains, Joe. That's right. If, it, if, it, if there's a 99% chance it's going to rain, uh, no problem. But if it has to sit there for a couple of weeks, you're going to have a very uneven stand. I know uh, double crop, this is, this is a concern that we talk about a lot with double crop soybeans, and sometimes mm -hmm. they'll, they'll plant them and it won't rain, and uh, maybe a month, month and a half later, we get a rain that'll get them going, and and by then it's really getting late. Yeah, so. I've, I've seen beans stay in dry dirt thirty days and come up once the moisture came. So, so what would be too deep in your guys' opinion? Three three and a half inches is probably pushing your max level. Right. I've seen and and certain varieties. They used to test hypocotyl length. I think you used used to tell me, Joe. Yep. Hypocotyl um, elongation. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and they used to give ratings, you know, one to five. One would be the ones that could hypocotyl elongate four inches. You know, mm -hmm. they'd literally plant them in a sand, sand four inches deep, and then measure which ones would come up, and then they'd give a uh, emergence score. We don't do that anymore, um, and I, and I think it's just because I think that the process of bean selection is selected for the better emerging soybeans because they're typically the better yielding ones. I think there's some kind of correlation there between obviously between stand and yield. So we don't worry too much about that anymore. And, you know, soybeans are, are a pretty incredible crop. Uh, you know, I, I, I think if you plant three inches, and again, the seed size may have something to do with it too. Bigger beans have more food reserves. Smaller beans have less food reserves. But then again, the bigger beans take more energy to push out because you got more mass. Smaller beans take less water to, right. to, to, to grow, to, to imbibe, you know, to get that, that, that uh, the, it, uh, basically absorb their weight in moisture before they germinate. So in a dry year, we always say you want small beans uh, because uh, they'll, they'll take less water to get come out of the ground. Right. But the point is is that beans are tough, and, and yeah. three inches, I mean, you're going to get a decent stand if, if, if you're pushing that three inches. Even if you lose 10% of the population, you still got enough to 
hit 100% yield. Mm -hmm. The next thing that I had here was the Iowa State to moth trapping network update. Um, True army worms really aren't, haven't been an issue. We aren't getting significant flights in any of the counties, but black cut worms are. And there's been counties every week that have had significant flight occurs. So that's any time they catch more than seven in a trap. Mm -hmm. um, this week it was in southwest Iowa. They had some, but if you look not very far away to the northwest, Washington County, Keokuk County, Mahaska County are all counties that have had, you know, 20, 25 moths trapped in the four weeks that they've been trapping them. So for cutworms. So what do we do? What, what can you do to prevent the cutworm issues, you know? avoid having weedy fields that have a lot of grasses cover crops are going to enable some of this stuff planting viptera corn actually gives you suppression of cutworm and armyworm damage from clipping mm -hmm. it will actually kill um those those insects well, so and, and your poncho or your clophiodin is um, pretty much used standard on all and are are the cruiser type products are used insecticide as a seed applied insecticide so Farmers have some protection, but you got to keep in mind that the, they have to eat to die. So even though the, you kill them, but if they do enough damage to the by eating to hurt your stand. So um, it just tells you when that corn comes out of the ground and it was in a field that had a lot of a lot of grass and weeds, you better be watching real close. Yep. With $5 corn this year, it's even more important mm -hmm. to be on top of that scouting. Every yep. bushel counts. Yep, especially when stand is so important. And the last thing that I had is if you look down south, we're starting to get guys question which fungicides to be using because they are heading out. And I've been actually scouting some wheat fields in with rubber boots this week because we got a little bit of rain last week, this past week. And uh, there's not a lot of disease on our northern wheat up here to justify a flag leaf application, but we are at that flag leaf stage. There's some studies that I was listening to podcasts this week on um, – doing both a flag leaf fungicide application and a heading application with the price of wheat that could actually be justified if there's mm -hmm. disease present. So that's something to look into, looking at putting like a strobularin product, like an inexpensive strobularin at flag leaf and then coming back with the more expensive triple stack at heading to make sure that we don't have head scab issues. So be scouting your wheat. Mm -hmm. Look at the flag leaves. That's where 90% of your yield comes from because that's the main solar collector when it comes to head fill so well the key thing to remember on scab is once the flowering occurs that's when the infection because the actual the fusarium fungus actually feeds on that pollen uh, and so once you start seeing pollination you get really wet conditions you you miss the boat on scab so right. you have to be ahead of that and that's why for head scab we typically shoot to have guys pull the trigger at 80 percent of head emergence or have 80 percent of the heads completely emerged by the time the sprayer gets out there you will have 100% head emergence and you can cover that before the pollination time happens. So there's lots of good products out there. I'll post the uh, fungicide FSCG for wheat control for the crop protection network too. I think it's a no no brainer to mm -hmm. do the fungicide application on wheat because what we've seen, we see improved test weight, uh, we, we see improved yield and um, it, it, it's a critical aspect of raising wheat now. Yep, that's what I had this week. Okay, thanks, Ben. Tommy? Yeah, Joe. So uh, obviously while the markets are uh, keep climbing, planning progress is moving quite nicely here across the Midwest. Um, I want to give a little bit of corn and soybean planting update for you. Um, pretty much everything from Iowa to Illinois and uh, into Missouri is a little bit behind on corn. There's probably some of that moisture that came through later than earlier in the week. Uh, but right now, uh, Iowa is at 30% as far as corn planting. Uh, Illinois is at 35% and Missouri is at 25%. Uh, Nebraska is at 10%. Uh, what, what was really interesting is seems that soybeans are kind of ahead of corn planting of what they've been in the past past years here. So uh, Iowa or uh, yeah Iowa is at 10%, which is around 5% uh, ahead than the last three year average. Uh, Illinois is at 25%, which is 12% ahead, and Missouri is at 10%, which is about 4% uh, ahead of what they've been in. Now that's just a few of those states there. Uh, we can post this on the on the Cup of Joe, but what's really interesting is a lot of this ground is being worked very nicely. The crop is going in very well, but also uh, it has tend to be a lot of people are rushing from field to field. And a lot of people are not seeing tractors out there. 
And with as being busy as it is, we're just trying to remind everybody to be safe. Farm safety. Well, the the fact remains now with these high-speed planters, you know, where they're planting close to 8 to 10 miles per hour, mm -hmm. it is incredible how fast this crop can be put in. And these percentages are changing so fast. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think I think the fact that things are going in in good shape, that's going to lead to good stands, and that's the first step to higher yields. So I know as you go from north to south, you know, we're, we get wetter. In other words, yes. uh, and right now here in West Point, we're just about perfect. You know, in other words, we're not getting too much rain, but we're not too dry. But you we only have to go, what, 40 miles, 50 miles north of here and start up, what, towards uh, Iowa City, and it's already getting very dry. We were so. in Minnesota earlier this week and driving driving south home, like you said, it just got more and more wet, but they were very dry in the central part of Minnesota south. That's why we spread our seed production over mm -hmm. our big area and uh, we got we got some perfect areas. We got some areas with maybe a little bit on the wetter side. We got some areas a little bit on the dry side. So we, we've got it all. Right. And it's going to continue going. I mean, it's going to be pretty fast. So, Do you think uh, those numbers are low? Do yes, you think I that do. that there's more corn and beans planted? Because I, I think the I think there's we're a taking, lot of stuff in the ground. We're having some very big strides over hours of time. Gotcha. So yeah. always, we always uh, told everybody, or I tried to advise farmers that I worked with, that um, you need to be able to plant your entire crop in two weeks. You be able, need to be able to uh, plant your or harvest your entire crop in a month. It's always going to take you longer than that because you're going to have rain, you're going to have mm -hmm. repairs, you're going to have flat tires, you're going to have anything and everything that can go wrong probably will go wrong. But we've had a pretty good stretch without rain. Yes. Uh, and so a lot of these guys are probably going to be getting close by the time uh, Monday rolls around. Um, there are guys that are done with beans now, I mean, mm -hmm. in, in certain areas. But what's really nice is, you know, we'll get some of this moisture, but we'll get a hot, windy day the next day. Mm -hmm. And that's really drying out. And like Joe said, the, some of these planters are so big that you can you can get a lot of acres done. And then also moving those planters from field to field is something to watch out for too. Say, yeah, you notice them when they're coming down oh, the yeah. field. I think our first local farmer was done what Tuesday night. Ben was that right? Oh, Corn, so soybeans, fun. everything. He has a high speed planter, and uh, so it's uh, it's going fast. Yes, it is. I talked to Joe Berkey um, a couple days ago, and. He said that he would be done with all of his beans, and he was going to start on corn here, um, I think, maybe Thursday or Friday. Yeah, he's out by York, Nebraska, mm -hmm. Strang. So so that's great. Uh, we like to see the crop going well and uh, get up to a good start. Being early, we need to yield. Uh, the world uh, demand is, seems to be strong for corn and soybeans right now. Farmers have opportunity, probably the best opportunity to make money they've ever had. So that, yeah. that part's good. So I, uh, this week, Joe, I want to talk a little bit about 2,4-D um, uh, burndown on enlist soybeans. Uh, we've, I've fielded several calls this week on can you, can you plant enlist soybeans right behind 2,4-D uh, burndown? And the answer is if you use 2,4-D uh, choline or a choline 2,4-D. The... The, the Dow product or the Corteva product. Oh. If you don't use that, according to the label, you have to wait seven to 14 days, depending on the rate. And, uh, and it's not, not that it's going to uh, have any effect on the soybeans, but you're gonna be off label if you, if you do plant uh, before, without that waiting period. The Corteva product, when they registered uh, 240 choline, they got the pre-emergence label, so that there is no wait waiting. But the generic, so the generic, uh, according to the label, you have to wait um, two four, or you have to wait uh, seven to fourteen days. But enlist, if you're using an enlist product, there is no waiting, and uh, and I think that's the confusion out there. Several people think that uh, in the in the before we had enlist soybeans, you. You had to wait, or you could have damage. Well, you won't have that with enlist soybeans, but the label says you have to wait. Nobody has nobody spent the money to register the older products to be able to uh, put the burn down on without a without a waiting period. Yeah, it's a technicality. In other mm -hmm. words, they're two four D resistant to, to all the different two four D formulations out there. However, the, the the choline D technology is is less drift and is labeled that you can put it on or plant and put it on whatever way you want to do it the beans are resistant the generic 
old 24D that came out in the 50s and 60s, well, that product doesn't have that on the label. It would be, it would, if, if somebody did use older product and planted, when didn't wait the seven days, they would be off, technically off label uh, for their um, planting. Uh, it'd be no different than, than somebody spraying uh, uh, a dicamba product and, and you can't spray until an hour after sunrise and they go out a little bit earlier, you're gonna be off label there too. So it's kind of the, it's kind of the same thing. We're not advising anybody to, to not follow the label. We're just saying that as far as the soybeans is concerned, it will not hurt them. You can't tell the difference. They mm -hmm. can't tell the difference. That's right. So the only other thing I had, Joe, is um, you know we had another farmer here in eastern Iowa that uh, got killed uh, this past week uh, in a farm on farm accident, and you know we've had a couple of those now in the last two weeks, and uh, um, I just I would just want to Tommy alluded to earlier. I mean these everybody's in a rush to uh, get done. We've got ideal planting conditions, and it's very very important to slow down, enjoy this this planting season that we have a little bit slow down take some time and and the folks are uh, our, our, uh, our city folks that are out there running around the country give the farmers a break uh, because um, you know we need we need all the food all the production that we can and we need our families to come home safe every night yeah the old, uh, the Delta Force and the seal teams that have a saying they say slow is smooth and smooth is fast so mm -hmm. Uh, that's the name of the game when you're out there farming right now is take it slow, be smooth, and you end up being fast. So mm -hmm. very good points. That brings us to the, uh, the joke of the day. And, and this one here has to do with, you know, I'm going to try to help you, everybody get in shape. You know, we, we have so many conveniences today. We do less physical labor all the time. So here is an exercise for people who are out of shape. First, you begin with a five-pound potato bag in each hand, Okay. You extend your arms out and hold them to your, hold them out there from your sides for a full minute, and then relax. After a few weeks of doing that, move up to a 10-pound potato bag. Then try a 50-pound potato bag, and eventually try to get to where you can lift a 100-pound potato bag in each hand and hold your arms straight out for more than a minute. Once you feel confident at that level, put a potato in each bag. <laughs> <laughs> that's how i'd have to do it <laughs> so there you go well thanks for watching hope your planning is going well and your family is safe and healthy and we'll see you next week and as always thank you for planting mershman seeds